Okay, so today I'm going to talk about language and the different genes that are associated with it. So, first of all, the definition of language is a system for representing and communicating information that uses words combined according to grammatical rules. Language can be expressed in a variety of ways, including gestures, writing, and speech. If you think about language, it's pretty, pretty interesting that humans are able to listen to these different phonemes that are coming out of someone's mouth or uh, out of your earphones or on this video, the, the ability that you have to take a sound and different sound frequencies and turn it into something that is a perception for you that you can understand and communicate back to me is absolutely amazing. And there are certain genes that are thought to be associated with normal language function. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So the first gene was discovered because of a family known as KE. I will write that here. KE. And they had a lot of family members that had verbal dyspraxia. And uh, what verbal dyspraxia is, is the inability to produce the coordinated muscular movements needed for speech. So after a lot of research, they found that the gene that was associated with was this Fox P2 gene. And it would be wrong to call this the actual language gene because there are other genes that work with this gene to help us uh, be able to produce and comprehend language. But it is mutated in multiple different uh, language impairments uh, across the uh, human genome. So the FOXP2 gene actually is pretty conserved in the animal kingdom as well. There's only two amino acids that differ from the FOXP2 gene in humans and the FOXP2 gene in chimpanzees, uh, gorillas, and rhesus monkey forms. So when the actual protein is made, there's only two amino acids that differ. So it's pretty conserved. And the uh, consensus nowadays is that the FOXP2 genes occurred about 200,000 years ago. And a relatively recent mutation of this gene is what gave humans the, or set humans on the path to, de to developing language and living in the, the uh, higher cognitive function type of world that we live in today. So other types of disorders would be something like specific language impairment. So about 7% of six-year-olds in the United States have a specific language impairment. So just anything that helps them, that causes them to not be able to comprehend or produce language at the rate or level that most of their peers are able to do. And this usually continues throughout um, adulthood as well. Um, there's two genes that are associated with it, the KIA0319 and the CNTNAP2. Um, this one down here is used, it's, um, it codes for a norexin protein, norexin. And what norexin does is it's a protein that's on the presynaptic side of synapses that serve to hold the presynaptic and postsynaptic elements together. So as you can imagine, this would be very important for neurotransmitters. And if you look at a synapse here, where these things are communicating with each other, and there's neurotransmitters in this presynaptic terminal, and or sorry the postsynaptic terminal and here's the presynaptic terminal and there's the synaptic cleft so these these two things need to be held in tight proximity because these neurotransmitters need to be able to cross and enter the next cell down the line so that this neuron could continue the signal uh, to the next neuron down the line so these neurexins are very important um, and the um, KIA A0319 protein is thought to be critical for neuronal migration during neocortical development uh, as well as normal function of adult neurons. So this one's often mutated in dyslexia, which is a pretty common, commonly heard of language deficit. Um, about 5 to 10 percent of people uh, uh, have it in the world and it's usually more commonly linked to females. And, and we'll continue our talk in the next video 
uh, about the discovery of the specialized language areas in the brain such as uh, Broca's area and Wernicke's area.